Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, we are back for the very first time in spooky season. There is a lot of blood that we have to shed. Bad blood in particular coming live from Atlanta, GA this week, and we're going to talk all about it. And plus, I don't know if you know, but there's some weird shit going on in the world with baby oil, uh, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, and there's a Netflix documentary about Vince McMahon. So all of that and more on the 390th episode. We are almost at 400. The 390th episode of Kings of Rings podcast exclusively here on WrestleAddict Radio. And it starts right now. It's, shit it's, it's really weird. Away. Yeah, it's 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 wildly weird going on these days in, in the world in the world right now. But we we are back to bring some sanity, probably no sanity at all whatsoever, uh, to this world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King's Rings Podcast, episode number 390. Uh Blood Boom. And we're gonna talk a lot about Blad Blood. We've been away for about three weeks. It was a really, really slow September. So so bear with us as we get our bearings right here as we are back live on Facebook. YouTube and Twitch. So thank you all of us, uh, all of you guys for joining us. If you guys like what you are watching or if you're hearing this a couple of days later, please like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews. Find, buy, find yourself to our merch store, buy some of our fantastic merch. I'm wearing some uh, right now from our from one of our old pride collections. Uh, the links to all of that are in the description below. With me, uh, no kayfabe. Kayfabe, I think it's going to be a way becoming the queen of the hollow wedding with hint, hint, wing week, which honestly, I am freaking excited for. I am, oh, I'm so I'm pumped. Very, I'm so I am pumped. very excited for. But again, with me as always, the founder, the proprietor, the man who has a fast pass to all of the freak offs ever in the world, Will Tarashak. How are you? Dude, I just loved how Costco is like, we don't sell baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm good, man. I'm good. I, you know, I was, I really want to do a show last week, but at the same time, you were like, let's take the week off. How much going on? I'm like, all right, that sounds good. Because uh, I went, I went back home and uh, my brother and I found out that Steam, you can do a, a library thing, like a, no, a family Steam account. Oh, so you can share so games. We, so we can share our library. Nice. So I came home to a library of 650 games <laughs> total now. Midnight music. I had to go through a lot of them to see which ones were worth installing. First of all, I had to buy a new hard drive so I can install a lot of them. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's <laughs> also a thing, too. So I've been playing so many Doom clones lately. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, yeah. I'm so up a, I'm, on, I'm on letter C going through, let, going, through, going, going through the games right now. So it's been a lot of fun. A lot of good stuff happened over here at Tower Shark Towers, yeah, too. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of pretty crazy stuff uh, going on in the past couple weeks in wrestling. NXT's... Uh, debut show right now is going on live. I have it. I'm watch. I'm side eyeing it right now. So we we may get a little jumpy from time to time just in case something crazy happens. They have packed out the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Uh, they have a brand new logo, brand new belts. It's, it's the week of new belts for WWE. Did you see the new IC belt? Well, I did not. Another new one. No, no, no. So Jey Uso one. So you know how the IC belt's like? It's gold. It's nice, but it's too much gold. Yeah, it's it's like you can't really tell what you're looking at. They added blue. Oh, they added yeet. they added yeah yeet right. They added blue in the right place. It's like all right, now we got something. Now now we got something. Right. So cool. Yeah, no. So it's good. It's a good. It's a good looking belt. I was like, fuck, God, it looks so much better now with the with the new belt and everything. So there's been a lot of weird shit going on. Uh, we're probably gonna gloss over AW Grand Slam because I was gonna talk about it. If K was gonna be in the show, but K Fabe is not there. But we can talk about something else with AEW. I think it's gonna be really a point before we get into bad blood. But first and foremost, uh, I don't know if you know, but Vince is kind of a weird guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Genius. Yeah. Genius to a wild level. Like we're talking like Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, like type of <laughs> genius 
but also just kind of a weird guy. There was a Netflix docuseries that came out at the end of September talking, uh, calling it Mr. McMahon, kind of a breakdown of the character of Mr. McMahon as it compares to the real-life person of Vincent Kennedy, Kennedy McMahon and whether or not those th- two things are one of the same or two completely different people. There have been some interesting reviews uh, for somebody who is uh, very knowledgeable of the world of WWE and the history of WWE and the trials and tribulations in particular to Vince McMahon, a lot of this stuff is a new for somebody who may be a casual fan or doesn't want some product at all, but I've heard a lot about what's going on with Vince uh, of as of late of the last six months or so, you kind of wanted to tune into this as well. And you probably learned a lot. I've had those opinions from casuals. I had those opinions from, or I heard those opinions from from people who really, really uh, watch wrestling on the regular, some of our podcast friends. I myself have not watched it yet, but I know uh, uh, Will has, and I know a lot of people- I sped through it. <laughs> Will sped through it, and I know a, a lot of people A lot of people have uh, tuned into it, especially if in the first week, Charles says, lock him up, probably. Um, I read the indictment. That's all I needed to know. Um, the indictment's- Pretty, pretty goddamn uh, damning, but that's not what it's about. Mostly this is about the the documentary, the docuseries of Vince McMahon. Now, before this docuseries came out, about a day before, Vince McMahon, for the first time in months, tweeted something about, like, essentially trying to defend themselves, saying, like, hey, yeah. don't believe everything you hear in this, you know, it's kind of <clears throat> it's kind of skewed, you know, so on and so forth. A rumor went around that he may have even decided or they were trying to push to buy the docuseries from yeah. Netflix and Netflix was like, uh, hell no. Um, we're, we're not doing that. And, and so on and so forth. I did hear also, and you can confirm this in a second, Will, that Netflix did put out a disclaimer at the beginning of all the episodes saying that a lot of the footage was, uh, was taken before the allegations came out and they did the last episode, which mostly talking about the new allegations as of recent time. So, well, the, the back half of the last episode definitely was, okay. Cause remember, remember WrestleMania 30, whatever, when in, in uh, Dallas, when he got stunned by Austin that one last time. Oh, 38, yeah. That, 38, that was the original end of the documentary. That's where it was supposed to end. Oh, so okay. So you can very much tell that the documentary was going there and then it was going to end there. Mm-hmm. And then they had to add on like another 20 minutes. Like, so, um, mm. yeah. Like, I didn't actually read the indictment. I only knew what we talked about or what was discussed in the dirt sheets, but the, the documentary does a pretty good job of going into detail of what the allegations are. And it's like, yeah, Tr- Vince, you kind of trafficked someone like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, the evidence is that like, they have text messages. You can make the argument that it's, that it's like, it's skewed. You know, it's not the full story, but like, I don't know how you can spin that. I read, I read <laughs> like, the text. I was like, Oh <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a good look. So I'm going to say I, um, they had to put that disclaimer. Yes. And I'm glad they did because I'm also, first off, props to Netflix one for releasing this documentary. Yeah. Because, because they just signed WWE to 10 years, $5 billion. With an so opt out at five, I believe. Opt out at five. So this is not the best PR for their new business partner, even though Vince is no longer associated with the company. Right. Yeah. So not not the best PR. So they could have eased this, like you know, we're not releasing it. We're burying it. It's not happening. So props them for releasing it because it is a very, very, very well done documentary. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think this is a hatchet job, I think you're correct. If you think this is very fair, like I do, I think it's a pretty fair documentary. You would be correct because you have that foresight in the like the the veneer of knowing what the allegations are so you're gonna go in biased regardless of one way or the other so Mm -hmm. i don't think it's really possible for the creators to be a fully fair and objective as much as ass licker boot bruce pritchard wants it to be (laughs) (laughs) i mean but i mean but but then again bruce bruce so they brought bruce back um and he has a final scene he might be even be the final scene in like the, the documentary, honestly. Mm. Um, um, in the last episode filmed in January 2024, and he saw a few of the first episodes. And he says, "I fucking hated. It. I thought it was a hack. It's a hatchet job." And he goes, "You didn't tell the story of how when my wife got cancer, Vince McMahon paid for pretty much the entire, um, 
like medical costs. Yeah. They gave her four years to live. That's been 24 years now. So like that's the Vince McMahon I know. So for people in the business, like John Cena, Undertaker's in this documentary a lot. Shawn Michaels is in it. Triple H is in it. Tony Atlas is in it. Hulk Hogan's in it. So they all have their biases. They all have their Vince is a fatherly figure. Booker T's in it. They all struggled. I thought very interesting. They all struggled to answer the question, what is Vince's legacy? And this was in 2021. That's why They all struggled answering that question. And you're just thinking about the allegations. The allegations hang over this documentary a lot. Yeah. And that's – that's just human nature. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be able to look past that. And I don't think you should look past that either. But I thought the documentary was excellent. Um, if you don't know wrestling, you're going to think this man's a psychopath. <laughs> if you do know wrestling, you're going to think this man's a psychopath, but you understand why he's a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. And Paul, Paul Heyman does, has a great line. He goes, um, Vince McMahon controls everyone around him. But the business is the one thing that controls Vince McMahon, and it doesn't matter if you're his wife, his son, his daughter, or his best friend. Nothing comes before the business because the business owns Mr. McMahon, and it's it's true. It's a great I mean, way to sum it up. Is, it is. It's he. I'm paraphrasing too because Paul Heyman said it much more eloquently than I ever could. I could imagine. But and that's that's what you get. This guy just. And the one person who can answer that question legacy was Tony Atlas. And he goes, he's the greatest promoter of all time. No matter what else you want to say, you can't take that away from him. And that's what I took away. Like you can you can think Vince is a dirtbag. Like after learning more about those allegations in that last episode, yeah, I definitely changed my view on Vince McMahon. This guy, I was coming here ready to balls, guns ready to defend this man because <laughs> The first five episodes, I'm like, he's technically right about a lot of things. Yeah. Like they bring up the um the the lawsuit with Sable because Sable accused him of sexual harassment and Vince just goes yeah I don't I don't really remember much of that lawsuit but I remember she came back to work and then they cut the Sable coming back to work and I'm like you know what he's technically right mm-hmm. <laughs> right he's technically right they settled and she came back to work so it couldn't have been that bad right um the the affair angle like the the documentary wants you to think that he's hiding his real life like negative things like affairs or sexual harassment or what we know. And bring it into storyline so we can blur the lines of truth and reality between who is Mr. McMahon and Vince McMahon and blurring reality. And he's technically right because they do that a whole angle with Trish and the affair and Linda. Yeah. And Trish and Vince are all defending the angle. And, and Trish was like, yeah, this was Linda's idea. Like, kiss me on the forehead so we make it evil. Even Linda defends it. She's in the documentary. Yeah. She defends it. So Vince is technically right, <laughs> right? You know, and, so it's, and like, it's one of those things in hindsight where it's like, well, was it art imitating life or, you know, or, exactly. or did it act, or like, was was this a just literally just an angle or had he been doing this the whole time? And you can go, you're never really going to know either which way. Um, and I tell you, after six hours of this documentary, you still don't really know. Mm, okay. You still don't really know. And Shane says it really well. He goes, Vince is Vince is going to show you what Vince wants you to see. Yeah. He did that. He did that in the steroid trial. He did that with the territories. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know a lot about Vince's um, childhood. I didn't know he was abused. I didn't know he didn't meet his father till like teenage years. I didn't know he had severe daddy issues. Yeah. Like allegedly Vince tells a story that his dad never told him he loved him until the day before he died, which like is Vince living his own delusion that that actually happened or is Vince's dad is a complete piece of shit. Like it's, there's a lot going on with this man. Yeah. Um, and, but he also doesn't do himself any favors. If you want to say it's a hatchet job, it's like, well, Vince, here's word for word what you said. <laughs> he goes, I did not rape this f- female referee. I can't remember her name. Yeah, I remember but that story. Even, but he's like, but even if I did, it was beyond stature of limitations. So it doesn't even matter. It's just like, oh, so you totally raped her then. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 what are you doing? Oh what are you God, doing? Vince. <laughs> it's like, he also had a th- like a story where it's just like, I have three minds in my mind all at once. Like, I'm telling you this, but in my mind, I'm thinking something completely different because you got to say something to the public that you're not really thinking. You got to say what to say, but it's not really what you're feeling. And the interviewer I mean, goes, what's, that. what's, yeah, I get that. But he, he just comes out and says it, right? <laughs> So the interviewer, interviewer says, so what are you thinking? What's that other mind thinking right now? He's like, oh, something fun, something crazy, something sexual. And it's just like, Vince. oh, my God. <laughs> Vince. <laughs> it's like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just like, and you immediately go to the allegations, right? <laughs> so it's at some time, it's like you didn't do yourself any favors. Yeah. But to Pritchard's, to Pritchard's point, 
You know, they don't really go into like how if wrestlers are injured that he takes care of medical bills. They mentioned the union in Ventura. They mentioned Chris Benoit. They mentioned Owen Hart, mm-hmm. but they also like, you know, uh, there's a CTE doctor who used to be a wrestler. Chris Nowinski. Nowinski. He's in a documentary and he defends Vince. He's like, listen, after Chris Benoit, Vince called me and was like, hey, can you have, can you come and talk to the wrestlers about CTE? We want to investigate and learn more and see if we can change. Yeah. And that led to the PG era. Yeah, right. Chris so Lewinsky is like also change. one of the people who led the charge. He's not the lead doctor led the charge, but a a, a good amount of his research. Because Chris, remember when Chris Lewinsky was literally like a Harvard grad, like Deuce as yeah. wrestler, but he was literally a Harvard grad. Yeah, um, neuroscience. Yeah, he was yeah. a neuroscience <laughs> grad. But a, a lot of a good amount of his research also led to the cases against the NFL. The NFL changing a lot of our tackling policies and stuff. Yeah, and a lot of WWE policies. Mm-hmm. So the interviewer asks him, you know. Because the, the arguments made from both sides, like is Vince changing because it's the right thing to do for his company and the wrestlers, or is he doing it because it's better for business and advertisers and money? So you can make the, an argument for both. Exactly, that's what Nowitzki says. He's like, listen, there's no, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Two things can be true at the same time, and as long as both interests are aligned, it's gonna work for everyone involved. It's I don't see the problem. Yeah. So he pretty much said, I don't care. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's the fact that the change is happening is good. So yeah. they do shine Vince in a good light of adapting to the change of what we're seeing in the world. Yeah. They do defend a lot of the, uh, the attitude era stuff with um, that was just the culture back then with like the, uh, the attitude and the revolting and the sex and all that stuff. Pushing which, of the limits, which for po- pushing the envelope. Yeah. For, which at the time, yeah, it was kind of a, the, the thing to do. Yeah. Across so, all of sports, across all of TV media. He was like, he was like, we never set trends. We always followed them, which is pretty correct. Tony Atlas said again, I think it was Tony. I was like, if you want to know what's going on in American culture, turn on wrestling. Pretty much. And it's a reflection. And the thing with, yeah, the wrestling's always been kind of a mirror if done correctly. And usually yeah. pro wrestling, I think in general as a whole takes pop culture and then like kind of just usually does it the best. So in different forms, whether it be comedy, whether it be like serious tones or, uh, or making a mockery of something they usually do They're Sometimes they're SNL. Sometimes they're West wing, you know, that, yeah, that's, exactly. that's rest. That's, that's pro wrestling, you know, uh, from time to time. I'm hearing that we have a Cora Jade return, which I think is very, very interesting. Ooh, interesting. Uh, yes. As Roxanne won the first match, Roxanne beat Julian. It looks like a very, they gave him a good amount. They gave him like 20 minutes. They gave him a good amount of time. So they gave him like 15 to 20 minutes. So they gave him a good amount of time at that. But yeah, there, there is the other thing. It's, the, it, you know, as a casual, you're you're going to go into this documentary and you're going to see all this wild shit. And for us, it's like, oh yeah, that was just Tuesday on Raw. Um, you know, I was like, yeah. Tuesday after all. But, there, but I think us as like commentators on pro wrestling kind of do know the other side of Vince where WWE and Vince are notorious in a good way for assisting a lot of wrestlers way past their time in the company. Did it for Scott Hall, uh, X-Pac, you name it. There's usually a former wrestler that's like, you know what? I was down on, I was like down on my luck. I called WWE and they shelled out everything for me. Yeah. They mentioned that too. They go, we, they, WWE offered rehab to everyone Mm -hmm. um, who asked for it, whether they were at the company or not. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at how many times they offered to help Riddle. Yep. Yep. Um, Vince was also pushed on the death of young wrestlers, Mr. Perfect, British Bulldog. Yeah. And Vince, even his old age, was still stubborn, like, I had nothing to do with those deaths. Right? Like, he took no responsibility, mm-hmm. which, you know, I see both sides of that as well. Yeah. Because, like, listen, they worked for you. They got this, you know, pain pill addiction because you had a, a a tight schedule. You needed this thing. Yeah. And, but Vince is still technically right, saying – these people had agency. They made their own decisions. Mm-hmm. I didn't force them to take steroids or to pop pills. They did that on their own. Yeah, which is what so, the steroid trial was trying to connect him to. Right. So, again, Vince is technically right. Yeah. They they had agency. They made their own decisions. Like, because you see plenty of, like, there are more wrestlers who took pain pills or had a drug problem that survived and are okay then now. Then pass away. Correct. Then, then died before 40. Mm-hmm. Right? So the, the technicalities are on Vince's side for that one. But to say he has no responsibility, I think, is a little absurd. I think that's absurd as well. Like, But, but to say he's 
fully responsible, I think is also absurd. Yeah, I would I would argue like if Vince was saying that to me, I would argue that, but you created the you had a hand in creating the environment that led them down yeah. this path. Yes. And you <laughs> if, if you 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 knew her as you knew her you knew her was happening or you should have known it was happening. Yeah. It may not be your fault, but it is your responsibility. Correct. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So the Mystery Man documentary is out now on Netflix. Uh, you know, definitely watch it. Yeah, watch it. it I, I I think it's very well done. It's very incredible. You can skip episodes two through like two, three, and four because it tells you a story of WCW. WrestleMania is like three. Yeah. And WWE has made like seven thousand documentaries XFL. about all of those things. ESPN yeah. has a documentary XFL. Like you can you can but watch you, it somewhere you, else. But you 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 need that for context for non wrestling fans because a lot of them are watching. Correct. It, right. Yeah. Um, and also poor Shane. I've heard a lot about that too. Yeah. Shane cries a lot in his documentary. And it's just like, man, yeah, you're, you're too nice to be in this family. <laughs> That's probably why he's about to go to AEW. If you believe all the pictures with him and the young bucks lately. So I think he should, I think he should go to AEW. Why not? I want him to buy out Tony is what I really want to do. It's like, hop McMahon's own wrestling again. God, God. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, Shane doesn't have enough money, though. He probably doesn't now. Shane needs to wait for Vince to die to find out he didn't get anything in the will. <laughs> oh, my God. I I, I'm, I have this fantasy in my head that Shane's just a sleeper for WWE. <laughs> He's the sleeper agent. Like Vince Russo and WWE. <laughs> yeah. So definitely check out the man documentary. Definitely a must-see, whether you're a casual or a diehard wrestling fan in any way, shape, or form. But let's move on uh, to... A bunch of wild shit that WWE has decided to do. Like, for instance, Saturday night's main event, you know, that thing that happened during the golden era and the new age of WWE, that big thing that they did randomly that sometimes preempted Saturday Night Live, much to the chagrin of Saturday Night Live. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, they are bringing it back for the first time ever. Uh, Saturday, December 14th, on Long Island at the Nassau Coliseum, the birthplace of of Saturday night's main event. So Triple H is definitely doing a nostalgia poll here. Uh, tickets are absolutely astronomical and it fucking sucks, but I am still. No, <laughs> how much? I saw 190. Ooh. Yeah. The where though? Like, where? like the mid to lower. Like two two hundreds. No, we're talking like one. Cause it go, it goes like tens, hundreds, two hundreds. So it's like one hundreds. Okay. So it's like second level. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I was like, it's like, oh. it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like where we were saying for evolution that level. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I was like, come Ooh. on, guys. I was like, come that's, on. <laughs> that's that's a little steep. Yeah, you know. So Saturday night's main event is part of, I believe, the contractual obligation that WWE made with Peacock yeah, it was. and NBC, yeah, it was. saying that they had to put on four prime time events. So expect three more of these prime time of. Three more of these primetime Saturday night main events. Dude, Clash uh, of the Champions is coming back. <laughs> probably. Just so they can keep the copyright. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, what Starcade. was like another? Starcade's coming back. Star no. Well, Clash of Champions was, was Clash of Champions a WCW thing? Clash was a WCW thing, and so was Starcade. It was. But, it, but that was like a one-off, like a quarterly thing they would do, Clash. Mm -hmm. Like Saturday night's main event. So you need like a quarterly thing they used to do. Shotgun Saturday night. No, it was not quarterly. That was every Saturday night. No. Oh. <laughs> Watch them bring back like Sunday night heat randomly. God, Velocity. <laughs> bring back Velocity. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would bring back Velocity. That would be amazing. But this is going to be guaranteed a packed show. You've got Cody here. You've got Roman. Like, they're, the stars are coming out this thing just basically because this is going to be a big deal. This is pulling towards the nostalgia of all the old wrestling fans, especially Long Island. Long Island's a hotbed for wrestling. Well, you, you're you very it much is. aware of it. it <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I really do want to go to the show. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I mean, the Nassau Coliseum, as it's still standing, is one of the more, in the grand scheme of pro wrestling in the Northeast, especially in America, it is one of those arenas that you just know if you're a diehard. Uh, WrestleMania 2 was there, okay? One of the sites of WrestleMania 2 was there was the Nassau Coliseum because they also did Chicago and L.A. Chicago and Lo LA, yeah, L.A., yeah. Uh, you had Evolution. Disaster. <laughs> it was a disaster. Yeah, I mean... Bold idea, really forward thinking, just not for the eighties. Um, they, they talk about that yeah. in Vince too. V and Vince was like, "Well, that didn't work." <laughs> yeah, uh, you have, uh, you know, you've had a bunch of Raws that have been there that have had wild moments. Vince's Corvette 
uh, Stone Cold put some men in Vince's Corvette at the Coliseum. Oh, that was that happened. Song. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bra- Trish Stratus debuted at the Coliseum. Brock Lesnar. Uh, Braun Braun flipped the, the hot- semi truck. No, it was it was, think, or ambulance. it was the ambulance. It was the ambulance. Braun flipped the. We were there. We were there. Braun flipped the ambulance. Trish Stratus debuted at the Coliseum. Brock Lesnar won the won his first heavyweight title, beating The Rock at the Coliseum. That was the same event that Shawn Michaels came back after being injured, going up against oh, Triple so H. Slam O two. Yes, yeah, so with and then yeah, at, uh, the unsanctioned match with Triple H. That was Shawn Michaels' return match. Was at the Coliseum that same SummerSlam with Brock and an HBK winning. Do you want to know what the opening match was? It was Ray, right? Ray and someone. Was it Ray and Angle? Ray and Angle. Prime Ray versus yes! Prime Angle. That was the yeah. opening match. I was there for all of this, by the way. <laughs> like It's a fantastic summer. Slam. So the Coliseum's a big deal. And this Coliseum is going to be slammed. It is going to be oh, yeah. absolutely monstrous for this Saturday in December. It's not that big of a building. It's what, like 11,000? It's like oh, close to 12. Yeah, they downgraded it. 11, between 11 and 13? Yeah, they downgraded it once the Islanders left. But yeah. 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 So it's going to be slammed. It's a low roof acoustic. It's going to be loud. Great for acoustics. Yeah. Great there for are, acoustics. The Coliseum in general, there are many famous artists We're talking like Madonna's, like the Madonna's of the world. Their live, their live albums, their live concert albums are at the Coliseum because of the, yeah, ac- the Coliseum. Because okay, of the acoustics. The sound. Yeah. Yeah. The sound is so good. Yeah. So Saturday night's main event is going to be a big thing. And if you thought WWE was done making announcements, they weren't because they also nope. said, hey, remember when we were going to give Minnesota the first ever two night SummerSlam, we lied it's going it's to new jersey it's new york new jersey it's going to new jersey it's going, no I, no they're not saying new york they're saying new jersey. new jersey they are saying, new, saying jersey. new jersey i think because new jersey's like no 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 you want this tax break you want this money <laughs> you say new jersey <laughs> Yeah. Which good on New Jersey, first of all. <laughs> New Jersey should be like, listen, if you want to bring the, the Philadelphia 76ers to Newark or Camden, you're changing the name to New Jersey 76ers. <laughs> As they should. I want the New Jersey Jets fucking immediately. <laughs> you don't want the Jersey Jets, trust me. Although it has a great ring to it. I do like I do, it does. I do like Jersey Jets. It does. I, I just want it because it's funny because the Jets are that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Summer Sam was literally just announced. It's going to be two nights, August 2nd, August 3rd. This fucking summer. You, knew, you do know what this means, Will? We can't go to we can't it. go to All In in Dallas because that's July. Oh shucks! <laughs> yeah, that's July. I was because I was all prepared to be like, hey, let's just go to All In in Dallas, and I think I also have a wedding for the July weekend, which is gonna blow. Dude, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie though. I hate MetLife Stadium. <laughs> I, I, I hate getting. Do. I hate getting there. I hate leaving there. That's why I'm driving. This makes me not want to go. <laughs> What's, are you going to drive both nights though? Or I don't know yet. Are you going to crash at my place? <laughs> you want to crash at my know. place? Well, it depends. Cause I literally told Charles this. I was like, Hey Charles, I guess I'm going to see you in August. He's going, God damn it. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I mean, depending where I'm living next summer. Yeah. And even, uh, so you remember Will Gray from bot spots and chair shots, the chef? Of course. Yeah. Of course. I, t- I leaked this to him. He's like, he's like, yo, me and my, me and my girlfriend, Allison might want to come up too. He's like, I've never been to New York. I was going to say no more. Come with no us. More. Let's go. <laughs> hey, we'll show you around. Yeah. We'll show you around. Let's take it to the edge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so this, this is a really, really big deal. Cardi B is going to be a part of this. Uh, what's totally my casual friend who knows nothing about wrestling. Who went to her first wrestling event when I went to see pretty boy smooth this past weekend at NWA's a uh, live event. She's like, Oh my God, I saw the car to be announcement. I so want to go now. I go, Jesus fucking Christ. I was like, damn, WWE is really good. <laughs> Cardi, man. She's got that effect on people. I guess so. She's making up for the summer slam. She didn't do like two years ago. She, she, was, she got pregnant. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. And so I, and it's up and it's up and it's up and it's up. Yep. That was that the song. theme. Yep. That was a theme. You know what I'm thinking about with this, with the, with SummerSlam in general, because I was like, wow, they were really steadfast on doing the first one in Minnesota. Like they were really pumped for that and they pushed that for a long time. But my thought with this is that SummerSlam, since it started doing stadiums the last couple of years, has gotten better attendance wise. Like Nashville was only like maybe half of the arena. You almost yeah. you got close to three quarters in Cleveland. I think for the first two night one, they're like, we can't trust Minnesota. Minnesota's not a hotbed. We need to go someplace where we know they're going to pack out like maniacs. So they went to New York and New yeah. Jersey metropolitan area. And I yeah. think that's the move. I think there was a little bit of fear that like this isn't going to work the first time so that they, they, they had to pull the trigger, which is going to be crazy. Like 
as crazy as MetLife is, like the only thing, pro- the only problem with MetLife besides the public transportation, because I think driving there is actually not the worst thing in the world. I've done it multiple times. Um, getting out though is a, the public out. transportation kind of sucks because you only have that one railway. Um, you get the one railway. You can go into Hoboken. You can also get there from Penn Station. Yeah, it, and from the Long Island Railroad, technically on one ticket. It's weird as fuck, but it works. Yeah. Um, but uh, the yeah, it, that's the that's the thing. The crazy thing about MetLife is that they're getting SummerSlam two nights, and they're also getting the World Cup final. Yeah. That's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to live here for that because <laughs> traffic is going to be terrible. It's going to yeah. be the worst. Yeah. So uh, I, MetLife's I, organizers need a raise for pulling off those coups. Yeah. I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if this was at like one in the afternoon, I would have no complaints because from Hoboken, walking down to the train, yeah. taking the train in, going for SummerSlam for four hours, taking the train back at five, six o'clock, mm-hmm. it's easy. Done and done. That would be perfect. This show's going to start at seven? Something like that, probably. Go to like 10? Yeah. yeah. I mean, go to 10, 10, 30. I mean, the trains will still be running, but it's not as good. Yeah, but that tailgate scene's going to be nuts. Yeah, tailgate's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, that part that that MetLife parking lot is made for tailgating. It's really good. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, really and, good. and the and the uh, American Dream Mall is right there too. That so you could probably spend uh, at least on a Saturday because the Sunday it's okay. So Saturday would be fine because yeah. uh, the mall is all open. But Sunday, since the mall is technically on two counties, one county has this weird Puritan law where you're not allowed to open like retail stores on Sundays. <laughs> so half the mall is closed. That's so weird. Yeah, I bet you that's where all like the meet and greets are going to be at that big at the American Dream at the Mall. American Dream Mall. That or else, the, yeah. or they might just again utilize the excuse of you're right by New York to just do something in New York. Yeah, Cody Rose, <laughs> just do the Javits Center again. Cody Rose <laughs> yeah. is going to be going on the indoor ski place at the at the mall. <laughs> 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 yeah so it's like Cohen's gonna wear like no shoes down the ski and just like with a frown and like his arms crossed the whole time <laughs> Chad Gable goes ah American yeah. made we made this mall that's why it's a fucking failure and a dump <laughs> God. that place is hemorrhaging money it's so big that place, like, that place might be closed by this summer slam. <laughs> probably because that it's not open on Sunday <laughs> You know, the day where everyone has off. Yeah, where everybody usually goes shopping. Oh, my God. So, yeah, SummerSlam is is coming really, really soon. Like, I was like, wow, 2025. And then I was like, holy crap, that's next summer. So, but yeah, that's coming. We'll, 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 we'll probably. We'll probably. We'll, 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 find, we'll, a, we'll find a way to make it work. Uh, also, uh, after that, you know, I didn't put it on here, uh, but we had SummerSlam. They announced Royal Rumble for uh, for yeah. indianapolis those tickets are going on sale wrestlemania tickets are also going on sale did that graphic for cause it's a february 1st so is this two well, one yeah. oh, that's so brilliant <laughs> yeah brilliant yeah it's great so within so within so october we don't know when SummerSlam pre sales october's wrestlemania pre-sale november is royal rumble pre-sale which is kind of asked backwards to what they usually do yeah if you love the go these big fours god help your soul and your wallet <laughs> you know like that is that is a lot of back to back. We're gonna move over to AEW real quick before we talk about Bad Blood. AEW had Grand Slam, the last I guess tennis court Grand Slam that they're gonna have because they are going to Australia, which apparently sales are not doing so well uh, for for their big pay per view uh, in February of this year. MVP debuted and, and all of that, and you know AEW was AEW. I haven't actually technically watched it yet. It's on my DVR to watch. What I do want to talk about with you will is this: this Wednesday, AEW turns five. Wow. Yeah. AEW turns it's going to kindergarten. Turns five years old. And I think they have now officially outlasted the Nitro run. No. When did Nitro 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 was ninety five. So they're, one. Oh, okay. So they're a year away from the Nitro run. Yeah. It, it might have been ninety four. I thought they were I thought they were ninety six. Ninety six no, no, it was not ninety six. It was not ninety six. Okay. Uh, WCW Nitro mm. first episode ninety five. It was ninety five. Okay, September fourth, nineteen ninety five. Last episode. Do we know? Uh, two thousand one, March two thousand one. Okay, so about five, five and a half. Five and a half. Okay, so they're Let's getting call there. It six. They're getting there. Yeah. Count it. Call it. Six. They're getting there. 
they're getting there. So AEW's turned five, and to celebrate their fifth their fifth uh, anniversary, you're gonna get Brian Danielson defending. Okay, I need to I need to figure out the sides of my head because MJF made a great tweet about this. So all right, there's gonna be Brian Danielson's putting his AEW title on the line against um, Okada, who's also gonna put his Love it. who's gonna put his Continental Championship on the line. Don't love it. However, the Continental Championship is only on the line for the first 20 minutes of the bout. That is what the graphics said. <laughs> I, I shit you not. I shit you not. That is what the graphics said. I'm not going to lie. That's very 2001 WCW. <laughs> Do you want to know how bad it is? So, all right, I'm going to look at the, I'm looking at the graphic right now. It says AEW world title versus AEW continental title, continental title only at stake for the first 20 minutes. That's tomorrow. How, how does all that fit on a graphic? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not well. You want to know how yeah. bad it is? MJF literally said he tweeted this and said, guys, I had to stop what I was doing to read this graphic. After reading it repeatedly for a full eight hours, I've come to the conclusion no human being can possibly comprehend the stipulation. It's impossible. This post definitely wasn't sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the company you signed with, bro. Look at me. <laughs> You could be on Raw right now fighting Bronson Reed, but you're not. <laughs> not at all. So, real quick, I mean, AEW turning five for all intents and purposes, they've done a hell of a, they've done a stellar job. They've grown much quicker than WCW ever did, and has been able to sustain it. I don't from- know, dude. They they got the NWO in under two years. Fair. Actually, actually, Hogan turned heel in under a year. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, although again, AEW had pandemic, so that, that they get a they get a pass. Yeah, and they they were really hot up until like halfway through the pandemic. Yeah. So. No, that they, they, I would say the the five years of AEW, it's definitely been a success. Mm-hmm. But it's been hard. It's been, it's been hard. A hard success. You know what it is with their success. For as good as their success has been, their misses are really glaring misses. I think that's what it is. Like they have a hard time, like, like really minimalizing their misses. When they miss, it's pretty big miss. Yeah, it's a big. Uh, miss. It's a big miss, and you're like, oh. And when, and when they and when they hit, it gets kind of like, oh yeah, <laughs> good job, guys. Hey, uh, that was a hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good job. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah, they they haven't had anything that will start. Like they have, and I think what AEW misses a lot, they and they had it with Hangman and. They had it with Hangman and Swerve. Um, I think they missed. They they don't get enough compelling stories. They have great matches all the time, but I don't think yeah. they have compelling stories. I agree, and they don't do well. They've been getting better at making stars. Yeah, MJF made a star. Like he was made a star in AEW. Swerve, and Swerve was made star. a star in AEW. It's number two Hangman. in the number two in PWI. And Hangman was made a star in AEW. Yeah. Whereas like the Bucks, Kenny, Okada, Brian Danielson, mm-hmm. Jericho, they were already stars coming in. Yeah. Right. Which is fine. Right. The W the W did that all the time and Vince reinvented them. But Vince always made new stars. Vince yeah. never had a problem making new stars, except for like a few years in 05, 04, and 05. Yeah. But AEW needs to do a little better in actually storylines, compelling storylines, mm-hmm. and a little bit better of making and keeping established stars. It's yeah, it's yeah, that that's that's the one thing that they need. Storylines and stars. So let, let's let's see what goes with it. But congratulations to AEW turning five. Like I said, the product's been doing well. They had I had my concerns. I know you weren't on the show, but I, I went on a diatribe about that that all out finish, um, which a lot of people did with, with Hangman and Sora. But you know, like they've I've started to tune in more to AEW to see what they're doing. So I think that's yeah. That's no, as, as soon as they go to Max, because they're on the apparent according to, <clears throat> according to Andrew Zarian, a deal is done. They have to announce it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're going to go to Max. Yeah. So if they're on Max, like weekly, 
and I can watch it next day yeah. and I can watch the pay-per-views without an extra fee on Max, I will be watching AEW like here and there. Yeah. At least the pay-per-views. Bleach sure. Report already announced that they are no longer yep. streaming wrestling. So there, yeah. there is that, something in the because, works. There's something in the yeah, works. That's because like the, 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 the HBO Warner deal and Max is – pretty much done. They just need to announce it. Tony Khan's probably going to announce it on this show. Good. I got a um, big announcement, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and Tony Khan and everything like that. So yes, let's move on to the reason for the season. Why we, why we are here. Bad blood folks is coming at you live this Saturday from Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Falcons and that weird white guy is a quarterback, Kirk cousins. Um, and <laughs> it is this it's going to be i think it's like the 27th anniversary or something of the original bad blood or the 27th anniversary of the original hell in the cell it was 97 i believe uh 97 it was like october 5th or something october 4th or 5th yeah in 97 so, yeah. the original yeah 97 so it's yeah it's an anniversary show it's an anniversary show they haven't love it haven't used love it in a while it. uh notably they they got they went very atlanta with this uh metro boomer metro boomer the uh rapper super producer and future song gta uh is is the is the theme song for this which is a very atlanta thing um to to do which is pretty awesome i like how he's kind of diving into the culture of the town of their that they're in which is something he usually did with nxt a lot a, as well to kind of yeah. to kind of get that hype around uh there is five matches there is one hell in a cell match thank the lord <laughs> okay so six matches because that's gonna be a length of two matches <laughs> <laughs> pretty much pretty much so so we've got that uh going on for for bad blood which I'm, I'm very excited about it is starting at six eastern which is really yes it's starting at six this was i'm gonna have to remember that yes <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to this was not a wwe move this is a tko move because there is also a ufc event that night that's why it's in, so they want to be over they, they want, want to be over by 10 for the main card correct yes yeah this is a UFC. I think it's a big UFC too. It's like 306 or something. Something like that. Seven. It's in like Utah or some shit. Um, but yeah, that, this was a TKO move. This is a deliberate TKO move. Um, smart. Yeah. Very smart. So they they kind of want they want Bad Blood to be over, and by the time you're finished with Bad Blood and whatever pre and post show shit that they do, you'll be able to watch the UFC card. Good business for trying to share the same space. Uh, yep. Essentially, uh, obviously you have a WWE Bad Blood store, which is going to be at the old CNN Park or a CNN. Uh, building, which I think it's called the Center now. It's not called the CNN Center. It's called the Center. Uh, as you see, they have Bad Blood themed championships, the Georgia Bulldog stuff. Um, they it's going to be open from this Thursday from twelve to nine. Uh, what I noticed in doing this research and helping out my friend Charles, who's going to be there in person, um, one the resale market for this pay per view was rumored to be as high as WrestleMania resale. Which is wow. yeah, which is nuts. The thing which shows you how hot WWE is. Uh, number two, they are doing meet and greets in a very Comic Con style at the store. So there are going to be free meet and greets that they usually do, and things like Xavier Woods and EO Sky. But you you can have an opportunity to meet like Liv Morgan, Bailey, Drew McIntyre, uh, the Steiner Bros, as well. Yeah. <laughs> Both of cool. them, Rick and Scott, um, and uh, I think Damian Priest as well at alternate times. Uh, throughout the weekend, but you have to pay in advance for them. And they're using the same, they're using the same uh, website that Comic Cons use uh, for for their for their video meet and greet stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, so so they're really banking on the fact that when these when WWE comes to town for a major event, it's they're trying to take over. They're trying to do many yeah. WrestleManias everywhere they go, which is smart. Yeah, smart. as they should. Smart. It, it it's a win win for everybody. It helps out. It helps out that local economy for that weekend, and it helps out you know the performers and everybody else. But that's got to be a, a wild schedule to go by, especially if you're a performer. Like all the media and then meet and greet. That's that's yeah, it's probably exhausting. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a lot. It it is a lot to do. But but kudos to them. So if you're going to be in the Atlanta area, I know about ba- you know how bad the resale market is. Ballard Club guy's going to Atlanta and he doesn't have a ticket yet. Ooh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so so think about that that that's how big it is i think the resale market is also bigger because this is the last american show where are they after oh they're in they're in saudi, saudi again for crown jewel and then survivor series war games in vancouver in canada and that's it and then there's no december pay-per-view yeah the, the only other thing you have is halloween havoc for nxt NXT. And that's going to be in Pennsylvania. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I could definitely that could definitely play a part yeah, of it. Yeah, so sure. this is this is the big one. And we're gonna kick this off, folks, with the biggest match on the card, which is probably going to be the be the main event. This is awesome. I don't think so. I would be because uh, you have Roman Romans and, on the card, Roman and Cody, but oh, I don't. And know. they're setting something. They're setting something up. This just shows Steeler, dude, straight in the middle. You put you put. I uh, listen. The logo has the hell in the cell. How this is how this is not the main event. I mean, I I get that, but then again, I I like this being in the middle because you look at your watch and go, this could go on for a while. Whereas the main <laughs> yeah. event, you go, all right, this is gonna be th- twenty eight minutes or so. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I, I liked, I liked the fact that a match like this can just go, cause it's going to be a long match. You yeah. probably get like 38, 40 minutes, mm-hmm. including entrances and everything. Like video package entrances, the whole segment is going to be like 45 minutes. Yeah. So I like putting that in the middle of the card. Cause it's just like, Oh, how long are they going to go? Yeah. And then it's Roman and Cody, right? Yeah. I mean, they're not, they're not honestly, not that interesting. I wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan of that cinematic promo, to be honest. Wow. I did not um, expect that from you. I, I love well, it. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it for in, in that actual segment, but yeah, I think this is going to be like dead smack third, third in the card. I still think this, I still think this means because where would you put, where do you put Roman and Cody then first? Yeah. Okay. You, maybe do yeah. that. I mean, I, I'm fine with that. I would love this main event. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. It's Roman and Cody. Those are your guys. I think the Those cells, are your two guys. I, I think you add the fact that the cell's way too ominous of a structure. You have the nostalgia of Bad Blood, and that first bad that was the main event of Bad Blood was that Hell in a Cell. I don't think yeah. you put this in the middle or first. I think this has to go last, especially when you look at the longevity of the feud between Punk and Drew. It's literally yeah. almost a year long feud. Like this yeah. has to culminate somewhere. And I think them putting on the main it is it's great. It gives CM Punk enough time to stretch so he doesn't hurt himself <laughs> a lot as well. It's <laughs> a good point. It's a really good point. You know, uh, but the matter is like this. Here's the thing with Punk and Drew. This has to end here. Like yeah, Seth, Seth just came back last night on Raw after, you know, literally being at every NFL arena known to man before showing up. <laughs> that was so funny. It's so great to see Seth. It's going to kick out of arena. <laughs> it was a great bit that they did. That was actually really funny because um, he's a Bears fan, too, which is great. He wore his Bears jersey and the Bears aren't even playing. Um, there he is. <laughs> Fucking Seth Rollins. Yeah. So, um, so the, this has to end here because Seth's back. So they're going to move on from something. I'm assuming in the long-term goal, Vegas is Seth and Punk. I think that's what the move is. So these guys have to be separated at some point. Uh, yeah. The matter is, the, the whole thing is who gets the win going into this. And I think Drew won at SummerSlam, right? Yes. And then Punk won at the Four Corners. Yes. Um. So it is literally a toss-up, but I think, I think you give Punk the momentum here. I'm going with Punk. I agree. I'm also going to go with CM Punk. Um, I mean, if he's going to move on to a bigger few with Seth, he needs he needs to win. Yeah. Because if you're going to do bigger and better things with him, he needs to win. Drew, also, Drew's the heel, a dastardly bastard of a heel, too. He is the second best heel on in WWE at the moment. Like, they also, they also again, back to the Vince documentary, they made a point, um, like, with, with Vince doing that, um, that angle with Trish and the affair. Yeah. Like Vince lost at WrestleMania against Shane and Linda kicked him in the balls and yeah. Trish slapped the shit out of him. Linda so, standing up after being catatonic for months is one of the, one of the best moments of that WrestleMania. Exactly. So the heel, the bastardly d- heel you want to see lose typically loses. Yeah. And that's been drew. He's done Excellent heel work in an era where it's hard to be a heel because a good heel is typically liked. Yeah. So Drew is a good heel where we generally hate him. We generally boo him, but we still like him because he's doing good work. Yeah. But we get the reaction you want, which is booing him, which means he has to lose. So Punk gets to win. Yeah. Punk gets story. It's storytelling one on one over here. Yeah. Yeah. I and I think it's I think it's gonna be a fan. I think it's gonna be a really fun bloody match. I mean, they're already doing the nostalgia. Punk came out in all white. Drew came out in yep. all black, so there, there, there's a, there's Taker and Taker and HBK vibes all over yep. the place. Uh, so be great, yeah. <laughs> so they're 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 doing something special here, which uh, which is gonna make it great. Uh, the bonus question I have for us for this week, uh, seeing as the first Hell in the Cell match ever, Taker and Sean was the debut of Kane. Do we see another soon to be legendary debut at this Hell in the Cell match? The Hell in a Cell match in particular, not the Bad Blood pay-per-view, this Hell in a Cell match. 
who would it be? No, like unless <laughs> unless you want to count like the re debut of AJ. AJ comes out. <laughs> AJ comes out in a cane mask and he's all short. <laughs> oh my! And she skips. She does the skip in a cane mask in her short shorts. Yeah. Um. No, no one debuts. But if you want to say a return. No, I say nobody. I don't think I don't think AJ wants to come back. I think she's too busy doing whatever the fuck it is she does. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I always say, would it be nice for AJ Lee to come back? I would fucking love it. I think she got. Ho- yeah, I think she got hosed. Um, she did. You know, at the time that she, you know, decided to leave and like she doesn't get the respect. She, deserves she does either. not. She does not. I think I think she's a shoe in for the rumble. I think she's a one. I think she's a rumble one off. I don't, th- I don't know if she wants to come back. I mean, if she was going to come back, because she's been a part of the storyline without being a part of the storyline. Correct. Right? So, but, like, what would she do? She can't get physical with Drew. She's tiny. Doesn't make any sense. I mean, she. I mean, she's still a performer. I feel like she can, like, jump on top of Drew, and Drew, like, kind of, like, throws her off her shoulder, which makes Punk go into, like, a feral. Punk go crazy. Punk go into a feral she's rage. Bang, she's just bang on the cage. Like, Something like that, yeah. Oh, no, Phil, go! Something, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. Or she comes out afterwards to give him a hug when he's bleeding, and she's just like she like yeah, like just licks his blood off of yeah. him. Yeah, because that's something AJ Lee would totally do. And like ju- jumps around like it was seen and make out with him. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Netflix is gonna be so sexy. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I think if there's time to bring her back and have her do something, this is it. She's been a part of the feud without being part of the feud. Yeah, and by the way, breaking news: Cody Rhodes is going on the Pat McAfee show tomorrow. So that should be love to see. So it. That should be interesting. And apparently, also, I totally forgot to tell you, NXT CB14 now on the CW. So they changed. Really? They changed the rating. Interesting. They they very much changed the rating. But we're both going with Punk here. Uh, K Fabe also chose Punk as well, just in case you guys thought that K was going to choose something different than CM Punk. They are not. Uh, moving on to what might also be the main event, we have Cody Rhodes and Roman. You know the the enemy of my enemy. Um, versus Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa in a, in like, a kind of like WWE, like the WrestleMania 40 night one main event light is what, is what this is. I mean, kind of, yeah, in a way, right? <laughs> you know, so, so this is going, I mean, I really thought nothing of this until they did the cinematic, uh, promo. Um, in Atlanta, in Georgia, at where in Georgia Tech Stadium, which is in the heart of Atlanta, uh, right in downtown where Roman played, but Cody grew up at. I thought the parallels are really interesting. It's also kind of a continuation of that uh, of Cody's Bad Blood promo with Metro Boomin when he finally got out of the car and he showed up. I was like, all right, that's actually pretty nifty, kind of long term storytelling. What are we doing here? I myself personally i loved every moment of that i thought their pacing like was good i thought their their point they hit all of their points really really well and in my head i was like wow this is the future of how they're going to like try to like structure these promos for a lot of their big stars who can do it i'm all for it i know you weren't that much of a fan of it um but i, I do yeah, know that was that were. was a, that was the problem i had with it so what they the the the, the script what they said in the story they told yeah phenomenal like that like the, the, what what Roman's point was is like you know whatever and Cody's just like it's not you it's not about you anymore it's about me this is my championship yeah. yada yada he yada. was like you were like, you were the guy but you're not the guy anymore like I'm the guy yeah, yeah. Roman's just like oh, fine what do you want <laughs> yeah you don't want to have him back like like that fine mm-hmm. cinematically looked great right yeah. um WWE really wants an Emmy that's what it came up to me as <laughs> but. Uh, the one problem I had, and I don't want this to be a future thing in wrestling because I think the promo would have been better and the story would have been better told if it happened in the ring in front of our live crowd. Hmm. That's what, that's what I'm going to put my res- wrestling purist hat on, right? I'll put it on right here. <laughs> that's <laughs> your, your old school white socks. <laughs> my, my, it's the first hat I could grab. My wrestling purist hat on is on saying like this. This is not my WWE. Okay, I'm taking you off. Like, this, this is not this is not my WWE. Like wrestling promos, wrestling is supposed to be in the ring. Mm-hmm. It's a live pro- product in front of a crowd, in front of the in in the ring. And I think it would have been just better with the crowd cheering, the crowd reacting. Yeah. And just like I I, I get it. It was cool. It looked great. The story was great. But it's not wrestling. It's not wrestling. 
I, I, I understand that. And it's one of those things now that I'm thinking about a little bit more. Uh, you know, Cody and Roman are two performers that the crowd respects. So they'll be yeah. silent and listen. So to your yeah. point, it still could work in a live crowd. Yeah. Um, but I think in the, in the, the music and everything, it was a little cheesy. Not gonna lie, mm-hmm. little cheesy. It was a little corny, little campy, little cheesy. Would you like it if it was just straight, just audio, no music, like for, even from the drive-in and all of that stuff, where it's kind of just like a raw audio of the entire segment? I think it would have been better as a video package because that, like, they did a video package of it on Raw, which is a little edited and cut down, yeah, and a little sped up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that was much better. It would have been great if that was part of the video package, mm. but as a promo. On Raw, that takes like eight minutes. Because think about it. Roman was advertised for the show. You bought a ticket, went to the show to see Roman, and you get that. Yeah. You got Cody at the end of the show, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But you get that. I'd be like, what the f- what the fuck is this? Yeah. It's not wrestling. Yeah. So, so either way, I like, like I said, they they hit all their marks. It was freaking phenomenal. The Miz right now is on NXT doing Miz TV. A, re- a refreshed heel Miz, by the way. Thank God. I know he turned on our truth. I, was like, I didn't watch Raw yet, but I know he turned I on our I was like, oh, here we go. He's he, like, he's got something. Apparently, he's, his house is up for sale in LA, too. But we've got we've got a refreshed heel Miz doing Miz TV with Obafemi and, and the Don. The Don. <laughs> also, that SmackDown logo, I fucking hate I it. I know you do. I like it. Um. I, it's I don't I don't like two letters as one. It just <laughs> looks really it looks fucking dumb. I like it. I and you know what? I I first I thought I wasn't gonna like it, but like I can still read both of them. And so I honestly, real quick, I like the new SmackDown presentation. I'd so like logo aside, I think it looks cleaner. Uh they brought back like the live the live fight the live fight card. Yeah. Like their anime and stuff. Like I just I for some reason it just looks a lot cleaner now. Uh which which I do appreciate. Uh, with that, but back to this, back to this tag team, uh, Roman and Cody solo and Jacob are too. This is a great opener. And also don't forget Cody's answer is going to be done by a live freaking band. So that's all. I think another credence for this to actually be the beginning of the show. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so but the live band who got, who went viral for playing Cody's theme during a college football game. They, Amazing. yeah, it's a, it's an HBCU band, uh, historically black college and university, uh, who got, who got viral from doing that. Cody found them cause it went so viral and everybody kept tagging him. And now through the magic of social media, they are now going to do his entrance live, which is a WrestleMania level thing on a B level pay-per-view or BLE. God, I would put that on my college or well, the already in college. I would put that on my resume, resume so fast. Oh my Go God. For a yeah. Job. yeah. Like, bitch, look what I did. <laughs> yeah. You know, what have you done? Performer at, Mikey? performer at WWE. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a cool story, man. Yeah. And props to Cody for doing that too. Cause Co- Cody has his finger on that kind of that internet pulse. He does. That he, he does. He has a very good gauge of what fans are doing mm-hmm. and what's going viral, what's popular, and he knows how to use that to his advantage. That's something that baby uh, babyface would do that makes fans and marks like you and me go, "What a stand-up guy!" Yeah, really cool. <laughs> exactly. I hope he hasn't raped anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that that's also that's that's a thing that's going to happen with uh, with that. So I think it's going to open the show. I think it's a great way to open on top of like Roman. I also think we're going to get some crazy Roman and Cody mashup logo, which I think is going to be like a, a special event type thing. Was God, be- I hope him and Cody do the ooh together. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Cody just goes, ooh. And Roman just goes, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's like this. Uh, but because of me, I, here's the thing. I don't. <laughs> no, no, I do an ooh off. Yeah, right. He's like, no, 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 no. It's ooh Roman's like, no, 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 no. It's ooh <laughs> Just totally go live event for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the live event just just getting nuts um <laughs> i don't here's the thing it's it's your two biggest superstars of the past five years in pro wrestling i don't yeah. think there is any way shape or form you have roman and cody lose this match no not a goddamn chance <laughs> fucking, solo is this in this graphic going i'm taking the pin <laughs> <laughs> yeah because jacob fatu is a monster i don't <laughs> he's his presentation has been unbelievable 
incredible. Yeah. To the fact that the other two guys are, you're, you're, which one's Tama and which one's Tama, Tonga Ta- and Loa? Tonga Loa is the one with the eye shit. patch and the, <laughs> he's the taller one that always yeah. kind of screws up. Yeah, like I said, who do this? <laughs> the, other one, the other one came up with a microphone going, hey, 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 hey. that's Tama Tonga. And he's like, no. Nope. I'm like, nope, that's enough. <laughs> you go back, go back, send this motherfucker to NXT fucking immediately. Shawn Michaels, you fix this clown right the fuck now. What are you doing? Going like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's this like, weird like, thing. Kevin Owens is in the ring. He what are you never doing? did that in New Japan that I remember <laughs> at all. Like, like what, what is going on, dude? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, you stop this nonsense immediately. <laughs> but yeah, it, it has to be. I was cut it for the soundboard. <laughs> you should have actually. I, sh- I should not have. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be Roman and Cody Rebus. This is absolute no brainer. It's going to be a great. It's going to be a fun match, entertaining. You have two of the best, two of the best performances ever. They're going to carry these two young guys in a match, and it's going to be interesting. I think that's a no yeah, brainer. It's, it's setting. It's going to set something up for sure. Absolutely, you were we're in something setting up for Survivor Series War Games. It, it yeah, has to be. Uh, yeah. This it's it's not the Rock. Just yeah, yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's not it's not. You the think rock. the Rock's going to Vancouver? He's not. <laughs> He's not going to Vancouver at all. Rock will show up at Rumble. Is what's going to happen? Um, here's another good bonus question for this. Because it's Roman and the Bloodline, do we see a new member of the Bloodline debut? Yeah, dude. It's for Kishi. I'm- Rikishi's gonna come down. <laughs> it's gonna be the end of the match. Three of them are covered in blood, and Cody's covered in blood twice. Gets Cody. Cody's bleeding from his chest and his head. Rikishi comes down and goes, "Guys, guys, enough of this fighting." Hands him sunglasses, and they do the two cool dance. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's how the show goes off the air i want rikishi to come and like yeah he he helps he helps roman and cody do the do the two cool dance i'm like uh yeah roman and cody do two cool dance with rikishi and cody takes the place of scotty too hot so all of a sudden he starts pulling out yeah. the worm <laughs> yeah he does the worm but i mean but who else who else is left there's zillafa too who is one there's like four or five more oh <laughs> yeah yeah um no, you know why? Because that might be a war games thing where Solo can get his win back. Mm-hmm. Solo can get the win where they can pin like Sami Zayn or something. Yeah. So yeah, so so we'll we'll definitely see what happens there. Uh, but good match. Other matches on the card. We have Dominic in a cage match. I mean, Rhea Ripley <laughs> versus Liv Morgan with Dominic suspended from a cage. I think Dominic suspending from a cage is a giant, giant uh just McGovern is there to kind of just not McGuffin, but it's there. It's a red herring. Uh, kind of, kind of just to distract you from the fact that Liv Morgan has something else up her sleeve that's going to come and take out Rhea Ripley because I think the Liv Morgan heel run continues. I don't think Rhea wins this in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. And I'll tell you what Liv Morgan has up her sleeve. It's Big Mommy Cool. I think Raquel comes back and it becomes Dude. becomes the heavy to take out Rhea. Raquel's been sidelined for a while for a great reason. Um, she has a, she has, I think it's called mast cell deficiency. Yeah, she has some disorder with like her skin, right? It's mast cell. So you like, so you, what are the common allergic reactions you have? Hives. Yeah, hives. So she gets like hives and all of this stuff because, and if she doesn't have allergic reactions to anything, it's because the way that her mast cells like kind of like populate out of control randomly, yeah. she'll just randomly have these outbursts. And there's like, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that sucks ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, it's I think it's called like mass cell deficiency or something. I looked it up the other day, but I think she's doing a lot better now. She's been away for a very very long time, and the Raquel ever looked good against was against Rhea Ripley. Remember, she retired Rhea from NXT. N- she retired Rhea from NXT, yeah. and also before she went down with her with her illness, whose tag team partner was she? With Liv. She was with Liv. She was with Liv. I think we see Raquel return, and Raquel is the reason that since Dom's not there to distract to because he's gonna be hidden in the cage, I think Raquel comes back and takes out takes out Rhea. Got Raquel in Judgment Day. <laughs> it could work. I mean, no, yeah, it could definitely work. I know I, I like she that. She just kicks like out Carlito. <laughs> yeah, God. Please. Please. <laughs> Now, I, I bet people wanted this to be inside Hell in a Cell too, but I'm glad it's not. I'm glad it's not too. I think it's Hell in a Cell worthy, 
But I like that there's only one, there should only be one Hell in a Cell match on a card like this. Correct. And if you had to pick one of the two, sorry, it's not this one. But you you need an excuse to get Dom out of there. Out of the rec- Typically, that would just be a regular cage match. Yeah. Or in this case, it could be a Hell in a Cell match. But Shark Cage works too. Yeah. Um, It's a goofy gimmick. It's a big but, cage. You were in and out of WrestleMania. Yeah, it is a, it is a big cage. But <laughs> he wrestles with big people. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think in kayfabe and storyline, this makes total sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I love that. I love that story. Book it. I would love to see Raquel back. I also think Liv retains because uh, Rhea Ripley's too obvious and there's still meat on this bone. There is. Meaning Liv Morgan's heel run. There's still meat on the bone with her and Dom. I like, honestly, the rubbing noses is more obnoxious and heelish than them full blown making out. It is. And I, and I, and I, and I also like that because like, you know, we all know Dom's married and I bet Dom's wife is just like, just don't make out with her on TV too much again. <laughs> yeah. So I think, and I think that it's, it's a good compromise, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's just rub noses. Like we're in fucking middle school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, kayfabe. I like it. Kayfabe themselves is, is going with, with Rhea. Uh, we don't know very Always go with your heart, K. Always go with your heart, K. That's why we love you. <laughs> That's why we love you. Uh, moving on. Other match on the card for the other uh, women's world title, the Women's WWE Championship, Queen Nia, who choked. She looks terrifying in that picture. And choked the living shit out of Tiffy Stratton out of nowhere on SmackDown. Uh, I thought they were besties. Are they, no, are they no longer a thing? No, they are. Tippy keeps on screwing up because Tippy's playing like I'm a dumb blonde who wants to cash in, but I can't cash in my bestie, but I want to cash in. Yeah. And every time I try to cash in, I screw up a match for Naya. So Naya literally like took her by the throat on, <laughs> on SmackDown. She's like, there's another title belt, you bitch. These, the eye raising part of that segment was that, and it was kind of a tell, Tiffy seemed very calm. <laughs> what, what, what <laughs> about it i was like oh all right <laughs> she was like you're not ludwig kaiser <laughs> oh man she's going up against bailey who beat naomi in her. a number one yeah right in a number one contenders match uh this all this story is all about tiffy and naya and bailey's here to just put another put a put another good match with naya their SummerSlam yeah. match was fantastic was absolutely was fantastic. One of the best of Nia's career for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Summer Sam match was absolutely fantastic. Why not do it again? The big question is, does Tiffy actually successfully cash in this time? I still no, say no. No, Charlotte's not back yet. No. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't like that Nia's like a transitional champ where it's like, how long is this transition gonna be? Like well, I mean, what it's it's could, been three it months. Could be a, it could like a, like it could be like a six month run, but I still she has a transition for Charlotte because like we all know she's going to lose to Charlotte. Charlotte's ready to come back. It looks like she's ready to come back from her socials. Yeah. Um. But listen, if she if Nia holds this from because she got it at SummerSlam, if she holds this from SummerSlam to Rumble, which I think is very possible, I think it's a good run for her. Decent run, sure. Yeah, six month run. Well, not six months. Sorry, four months. Um. It's a good run for her, or four to five. Uh, yeah, good run for Nia. Uh, I, I still go with Nia here. I still, yeah, for sure. I think because you have to like this is kind of Bailey's rematch per se. So I think Nia has to solidify. We're done with Bailey. Yep, we're done. No with, more Bailey. No more Bailey. Bailey, take that fat ass yours and go to Raw. <laughs> so much cake. Yeah, that's a comp. That's supposed to be a compliment, by the way. Yeah, Charles. Charles. You know, Charles might have the opportunity to meet Bailey. But I think he's working. No, no, I fold it Saturday. It's Saturday morning, I think. She's available. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> that's 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 Chuck's that's Chuck's girl. That that's his that's his woman in, in WWE. I also I'm I've been a <laughs> Bailey I've been a Bailey boy since forever. <laughs> Bailey is always my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, Hugger Bailey. So you're you're going with you're going with Nia as well? Yeah. Yeah. I I I K also going with Nia. Good job, K. Appreciate you. And final match on the card. Uh, hey, the two dudes in Judgment Day that actually matter don't like each other. Um, <laughs> this is your your this match has to be hidden somewhere. It's got to be after. It's got to be either after the opener or before the closer is where I would put this match. Um, you have Priest versus Balor. Balor's kind of. 
I don't get the Finn Balor character right now. Like he's he is he mad? Is he petty? Does he have no Both? direction? Like is he really leader of a Judgment Day now? Like he he seems a side character to everything else going on. Well, he is because it's because Priest has been very wrapped up in with Rhea's storyline as well. Yeah. So Priest is playing second fiddle to Rhea, which means Balor's playing third fiddle <laughs> to Priest. <laughs> so, like, here's the thing: Balor hasn't gotten the heat. Judgment Day has gotten the heat. That's, I think, the problem with this feud with, with Balor and Priest. I, I agree with you on that. And Liv has gotten the heat because only she can attack Rhea. Yes. She threw a shoe at Rhea on Raw. It was funny. Right. But Rhea can get, get, not again, can do, be the powerhouse because she can fuck up JD McDonough and she can fuck up Dom. Yeah. So Balor is kind of left with like, I'm just the guy who does the fight fake punches and kicks when Priest is already taken out. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think this match needs a stipulation. Like if there was like a uh, no holds barred or street fight, something. Street fight would have been great for this. Yeah. I think street fight would have been really, really good, good for this. Is the only gimmick on this is the hell in the summits and rightfully so. Rightfully so. It's like the singular gimmick of, of the show, but a street fight wouldn't have been a bad idea either um, for, for this, which is, you know, it is what it is. But if my thing is, I don't think you get a, like a, if, Rhea's losing, then I think Priest is winning. Yeah, probably. And Priest, since honestly, Priest has been presented and he has done a better job presenting himself and his confidence in his performance mm -hmm. way better since losing the title. It's like he's more of a main eventer without the title than with the title. I think it's also one of those things that. It was when he was the champion, that's when the live and Dom stuff started really ramping up. Yeah. yeah. And he, I think he became a victim of like, You're, this story is hotter than you going up against Gunther. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Gunther with the title, just say this, Gunther with the title is, I don't want him to lose for a very, very long time. Ag agreed. <laughs> agreed. But like, I, I see Damien Priest, I go, yeah, you're a champion. Yeah. You're going to be champion again, and you're going to... Yeah, you have it. You you found it. You cl everything's clicking for him right now. Yeah, and I, I think you give it the priest on this. Balor can take a loss because yeah, for sure it, it's it's Balor, <laughs> you know. So that is that is the five match bad blood card, and so that is pretty much the end of it all. I I honestly expect big things from this show. Yep, I, they've been building <laughs> this show for a very very yeah. long time, dude. They announced this show back in like January. <laughs> like, <laughs> they announced this show. Maybe it was right after Mania. Like Bad Blood is coming back. We're like, when <laughs> October? Wow, wow. <laughs> that's a long way away. So yeah, they've they've put a lot of stock into the show. I'm gonna go high. I'm going nine. I'm going nine too. Uh, I I think nine is is a good number for us. I think they are going to. I think the opener, whichever it be the Hell in a Cell or the tag team match, is going to be fucking phenomenal. The closure is yeah. going to be phenomenal. I think. Yep. I I think you uh, Re and Live is going to. They tell great stories. Their SummerSlam match was an underrated opener, but a good opener nonetheless. And I think Bailey and Nia are also going to tell a good story, especially yeah. with the addition of Tibby. I think the only potential dud is the Priest and Balor match. Which is going to be a good match anyway, because yeah. Balor puts on great matches. Yeah, Balor's right? a great worker. <laughs> yeah, you want to you want to see Priest win. You want to see what happens with how does how does Liv wiggle out? Yeah, you want to see the chaos of the Hell in a Cell. You want to see a great match with Bailey and Nia, and you want to and then you want to see what's going to happen with Roman and Cody in the Bloodline. Like everything, everything you want to see is going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. And it's like yeah, Gunther's not on the card, which kind of sucks, but. He's defending. He's defending two nights after against Sammy. That's a great yeah. main. <laughs> he just he just keeps telling Sammy no. <laughs> yeah, just like I just go fuck yourself. <laughs> good, good heel work. Gunther won me over when he when he told Bret Hart his favorite wrestler growing up was Goldberg in Canada. Oh, dude, I <laughs> laughed so hard. Even Bret, 
<laughs> even Bret Hart, also Vince Doc. Bret's in it, oh and boy. within the first seven minutes, Bret Hart's already sucking himself off. <laughs> Bret fucking hard. <laughs> they talk about the screw job too. Yeah, and uh, Bret still holds a grudge. <laughs> like, again, Vince was technically right. Like. Vin, Vince is just like, that's my property. That belt's yeah. not yours. That's mine. Paul Hammond and, had said that in the uh, Monday Night Wars doc. Like, you don't do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you didn't do business. Like, yeah. he did the same thing with Wendy Richter. They covered that story. Like, mm-hmm. they covered all the bases. And Vince is technically right, even if he's just a dick about it in a <laughs> yeah. lot of instances. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I'm expecting a lot of good stuff from Bad Blood. I'm going nine. It's I fucking Bret Hart. Fucking Bret. Uh, it is going to be a phenomenal show. It looks like NXT is still going pretty hard. They had, uh, they they did have a street fight between Wesley and Zach. Um, and Zachary once again a Chicago street fight. There was a women's tag match. Uh, I expect something big at the end of the NXT show. Shawn Michaels came out on uh in a Sports Illustrated article said like. He goes, he goes, we have a lot of stuff coming down the road on the men, on both sides of wrestling, on men's and women's. Like, he's pretty much said, you haven't seen anything yet. So yeah, Sean's talking about a big game. And I'm like, holy fuck. What did, like, what did yeah, he do he's now? he's a good promoter. He's he a good promoter. Yeah. Doing. yeah. He's doing a good job with NXT, for he sure. Is. I don't even watch NXT, but you know what? I'm still, like, I don't watch NXT, but I kind of know what's going on and who's coming up in NXT. Yeah. And the fact that they're able to now travel, which might be, like, the tone for the foreseeable future. Oh. Um is is pretty freaking nuts. You know, if they can put eight thousand people in an arena, even if even if they like block off most of the third deck in most arenas, or they do small arenas, success or college arenas, success. Yeah, yeah, you're developmental. If you can put stick between seven and eight thousand people, or six and eight thousand people in an arena, that's a success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it is. It is a wild success. Um, so yeah, that is the end of our show. Uh, this week again, Bad Blood will remember. Write this down. Bad Blood starts at six on Saturday. Six. A- I'm ordering pizza. <laughs> six on a Saturday. It is rapidly early. Although I am excited, it's probably gonna be done by ten. Like, yeah, it's gonna be nice. Yeah, and I don't think there's any big college football games going on this weekend. I don't. I'll probably be wrong by Thursday. <laughs> um. But besides that, I, I'm very excited for this for this event. Uh, we are probably I'm going to confirm it now. Sir Charles, my good friend from Atlanta, is going to be on the show next week so we can talk about Wrestle Dream with us. He's like, I'm off. I'll, I can shit on AEW for a little bit. I was like, all right, <laughs> here we go. Because uh, Wrestle, Wrestle Dream is going to be our show next week. We're going to talk about all of that, uh, which will be like the one year anniversary of Edge, who obviously won't be wrestling because he decided to do edge stuff. I mean, he, bro- too- he broke his knee or something <laughs> yeah, too early on in his tenure. <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's such as AEW. Poor, sometimes. Poor, edge. Yeah, it's poor such, edge, such as AEW. Shelton Benjamin might be coming there too. Actually. Right? Oh dude, it's no, it's the, um, uh, it's, uh, something eight. No, it's the God hurt, hurt business on agency. Yeah, because the, the, MVP is saying it's going to be, it's Hurt. Um, hurt Industries? God. Hurt Worldwide? No, it's some, no, it's like, it's like another word for business. Uh, Corporation? Fuck. Something like an S. Hurt I don't S? know, but it's, okay. they're saying it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> the Hurt Consortium? Something like that. But it's going to be like MVP, Swerve, Lashley. Uh-huh. Hang, I'm not Hangman. <laughs> um, <laughs> Benjamin and Hobbs. Freaking last syndicate. Syndicate. Ah, uh, the Hurt Syndicate. Not a bad name. Not a bad name. I mean, listen. The only reason the Hurt business failed is because they moved with the bloodline. Because the blood. If you look at the bloodline, and the Hurt business archetype, they're the same fucking thing. Very, very similar. <laughs> yeah, they're the same. Well, I mean, well, I mean, Hurt business was just like they do it in suits. Yes, and exactly. <laughs> yeah, and bloodline was just like we do it in. Wrestling regular gear, gear yeah. <laughs> dude i with ula followers I, yeah i miss i do miss the hurt business motif though i really liked what they were doing they had, i thought they had something going but they just didn't run with it it had potential yeah i still i still think it was a dud but it's you know what it's people are gonna remember it for better or worse like 10 years from now mm-hmm. people are like remember the hurt business oh yeah i remember the hurt business yeah and that's gonna be it yeah that's how we remember it yeah i mean for for I know Bobby went on record and said it was a success to him because he said people came up to him and was like, oh, yeah, you know, like my son likes to wear suits now. I was like, well, they did have really freaking nice suits. I mean, that was the point. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, I I, I don't. Mm, yeah, I could. Yeah, I think he's right in saying it was a success to him because, yeah, it meant a lot to him. Yeah. And it, it did propel him. 
it Bobby did. Lashley. It did. It did. It did save. It kind of saved his career. It's, so it saved the second sense, run in WWE. Yeah. In that sense, absolutely, it was a success. It made Bobby Lashley a success. Didn't make anybody else success. Jack yeah. Shit for anyone else. <laughs> yeah. That was the only issue. <laughs> so that's the, yeah. That, I think that's 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 the big thing with the Herp is like you look at other factions. Like New Day, even New Day, mm -hmm. right? Kofi won a single, big singles one. Biggie won a singles one. Even Xavier Woods won King of the Ring. Yes. Um, it was all like the goals that they wanted. Yeah. Evolution, DX. Yeah. You know, they all split off and they did Big Shield. They all split up and did big things. Mm -hmm. Her business didn't. The Nation, the Nation Domination, you know, like yeah. they all. They all had good, they all had good runs, except I think maybe God, well, God Robert had the good character. He never had a good title run. I think he was one as high as European. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but you all we all remember the Godfather. Exactly, yeah, that's, so. that's true. <laughs> that's but her her businesses didn't it didn't elevate just everybody. Yeah, just had Bobby, who was kind of already pretty well over, well off before that anyway. But. Yeah, it is what it is. But anyway, with that being said, you ready to get on the road, sir? Let's do it, sir. Please, please tell me when. Okay. Boys. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 390, Blood Boom, because it's going to be Metro booming down in Atlanta this week for Bad Blood, a very, very highly anticipated card by yours truly and Willie T. I have been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews, buy some of our awesome ridiculous merch the links all of that are in the description below if you are listening to us please make sure you're listening to us on wrestle addict radio the cure for the common wrestling podcast and follow wrestle addict radio socials at addict dash underscore wrestle on twitter because i won't call it x and at wrestle addict radio all one word everywhere else will tower shock Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, now you know. My name, <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Yeah. Don't, don't let me, let me say that I, I'm uh, going to let name, you just to put it on a social media clip at some point. <laughs> my, my name is Will Tarish. Like T is in Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. What I meant to say is if you don't know, I am the one of the biggest video game fans out there in the world. Maybe not the world, but I do love video games. I've put over 500 hours into multiple games and if you like to if you like to video game channel my buddy nash launched is launching like a media brand type thing called off the shelf media it's a youtube channel mm -hmm. it's a blog where uh, i've been writing game reviews for ps2 retro reviews as well as doing gameplay videos um right now i'm doing walkthroughs of age mythology campaign on titan difficulty which is the hardest difficulty in the game rts like age of empires it's a lot of fun it's there uh, off the shelf media is the youtube channel go give you boy some support and um like video games you know drop us in our discord talk talk, talk talking about video games yeah yeah Fine. yeah please see, please see. when we come back next week folks uh we are going to get a bird we're going to get a uh kind of a bird's eye view or guess a uh uh, a full experience of what Bad Blood was like from someone in the crowd known as Sir Charles. And we're going to go into AEW, talk about their five year show and whatever the hell that Continental Championship matches with Brian Denson and Okada, as well as talk about their latest pay per view, AEW Wrestle Dream. Uh, and hopefully, Kay will come back from their from their hollow wedding planning spectacular. Uh, fingers crossed with all of that. It's going to be a very, very interesting show uh, next week. So until then, next week folks remember bad blood is at six bad blood is at six bad blood is at six goodbye good night we will see you soon and i think it's gonna be a first aw show without slack but that's okay because fuck you slack we'll see you next week this has been a wrestle attic radio branded podcast